Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Lower Incise Extraction, a Contemporary Treatment Option or an Orthodontic No-Go. This is by Justin Arnold. Justin started off by giving an introduction to the topic of lower incisor extraction. He described Kokic mentioned that it should be part of the orthodontic treatment techniques to extract one lower incisor. That's Kokic from 1984. He described how ideal static and dynamic occlusion can be achieved through this extraction approach, and Rivers in 2016 demonstrated this. He also relented and stated that the evidence behind lower incisor extraction is generally based around case reports, with the exception of one systematic review. So why should we carry out lower incisor extraction? Well, Jasser went on to describe why. It reduces the anchorage demand and keeps an intact posterior segment for anchorage. It improves dental occlusion in a shorter time frame. It has a psychological benefit to our patients. Profile also has been shown to improve in mandibular protrusive cases. This was by Levin in 1964. So when should we carry out the lower incisor extraction? What are the indications? Well, the systematic review by Solich in 2011 demonstrated this information. And that is a mild to moderate class 3 case. One where we have an edge to edge occlusion and one where there's a 45 millimeter tooth size discrepancy of the lower arch to the upper arch. But Jason was keen to advise when not to also use this extraction pattern. And the main contraindications are for severe deep bite cases, cases where there's bimaxillary crowding of an equal amount, but also where there's triangular lower incisors and there's less than three millimeters of crowding. He also mentioned if a patient has a high labial frenum, actually extracting the lower central incisor may result in gingival recession if it is to be removed. And there are risks to having the lower incisor incisor removed. The main aesthetic challenge is that it can produce a black triangle. It can result in an increased overjet and overbite. And also, if there is relapse that takes place, it opens up a gap within the aesthetic zone. Jason then described how to plan a lower incisor extraction case, and it starts with a Bolton analysis. He described the anterior ratio of being 77%. This is the lower 3 to 3 mesial distal width of the teeth and the upper 3 to 3 mesial distal width. And what I liked about Jason's lecture is that he described a very analytical approach to calculating when a low incisor extraction was required, but also how to manage it. So he gave cases as an example. He started off with a class 2 division 2 case with class 1 molars and 4 millimeters of lower incisor crowding and very mild crowding in the upper arch. Now he calculated the Bolton discrepancy at being 87% for the anterior segment. This is too high. But when he factored in extraction of a lower incisor, it became too low at 74%. So how did he resolve this numerical discrepancy? Well, he's aiming for 77%, so he stripped the upper incisors by 2 millimeters. This gave him the ideal percentage of the upper 3 to 3 segment, the lower 3 to 3 segment, with the loss of one lower incisor. The second case he went on to demonstrate was a class 2 division 1 case with half unit class 2 molars and a 6 mm overjet. Here there was a malocclusion to manage as well, but he stated still dividing up the case from anterior segment, you can still look at the Bolton discrepancy. Here he showed again that there was a discrepancy which resulted in an 87% ratio. Again, extracting one low incisor meant he needed to carry out some stripping in the upper 3 to 3 region. Now, with this case, he also combined extraction of two upper first premolars. Now, this sounds counterintuitive. Why is Jason extracting two upper first premolars as well as carrying out anterior stripping? Well, I liked Jason's thought process here, and he very much divided the anterior 3 to 3 segment ratio management to the posterior malocclusion management. 
the extraction of the upper first premolars were to manage the increased overjet. However, that doesn't affect the anterior 3 to 3 ratio. To achieve ideal occlusal anterior outcomes, the 3 to 3 in the upper needs to be balanced with the 3 to 3 in the lower. Jackson's plan was to extract one low incisor that necessitated to balance the Bolton's analysis to carry out stripping of the upper anterior segment. I very much enjoyed Jackson's lecture, his numerical and analytical approach to low incisor extraction, as well as an honest opinion as to when it works and when it doesn't work. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Orthodontics in summary. Please do subscribe if you wish to see the notes. They're available at www.orthoinsummary.com.